resources of finance is a really straightforward section of the course and it's also very commonly asked as an area for a nine mark question in the exam so it's really important that you know this area well and it it comes into unit one and unit two as well so you need to be able to explain the difficulties that many new businesses face when attempting to raise funds or access finance. We're going to have a look at that at the end of the presentation. We need to know the main sources of finance available to small businesses. And because this is a nine mark question, we do need to be able to explain the advantages and disadvantages of each source of finance. And we also need to know the organisations that can support small businesses with raising finance. So first of all, most students think about loans when they're thinking about sources of finance for um, um, setting up a business and this is money that's lent by a bank and it will have to be paid back and it's going to be over a set period so usually a loan um, might be over a period such as two years or five years or a more long-term loan could be a kind of 10-year period but it's always going to be over a set amount of time now one of the benefits of this is that you can borrow larger amounts of money and I've put a little asterisk there meaning that they're larger compared to um, overdrafts usually you can get a loan for a much larger amount than you can get an overdraft for um, and repayments are spread over a period of time as well so that makes it manageable you're not just going to have to pay back the full amount of the um, loan um, in one go so this is you know for a business when they're setting up if they have to borrow to maybe purchase new machinery that could be in you know the thousands tens of thousands of pounds um, they're not going to just be able to pay that back within six months they, they may need to spread it over five years so it makes it very manageable for them however interest which is the cost of borrowing will have to be paid on top of paying back the loan so interest is really the the, the cost of borrowing uh, and it's the way that banks make their money and also banks may be very unwilling to lend to small businesses and I will have a look at this in a bit more detail at the end of the presentation but briefly they, they may not trust a new business because they don't have any sales figures they they don't know that for sure that they're going to be able to meet these payments that the business is going to be a success so this is the bank's money and if the business can't pay it back and the bank don't get it back they've lost money as well so they're going to be very cautious with the people that they lend to Another thing that you could do is maybe go and borrow from friends and family. So they uh, might be a more um, understanding than a bank and maybe if you have a, a really poor month in terms of um, sales figures, they might be more willing um, to let you have a month off repayment possibly or they might be more kind of generous with the amount of time that you're allowed to borrow over. And they may charge less interest or even no interest as well because they're friends and family. However, they're going to be limited in the amount that they can lend. Banks are going to have a lot more money that they possibly could lend than your friends and family, unless your friends and family are very rich. And some friends and family, because they're lending to you, they may feel that they are owed a say in how the business is run as well. So um, some people say don't mix um, family and, and work together because it can get very complicated and you can have um, fallings out and those types of things. An overdraft is uh, when a business can spend more money than they have in their bank account so typically most people have say a two thousand pounds overdraft and uh, if you go to university as well banks are willing to lend you and give you a, an interest free overdraft for the amount of time that you're at university um, but once you once you leave they do start charging you interest on that but the the benefit of this is once it's set up, you don't need permission when you want to use it as long as you're within your overdraft limit. So if you have it set up, even if you don't need it, if, for example, you have a difficult month and uh, there's lots of bills that are falling in one month, you can go into the overdraft and um, pay them without having to ring up the bank, fill in lots of forms like you would do with a loan and you only need to use it when required so this is really I'm making a comparison to loans here but when you check out a loan you kind of have to estimate how much money that you need and then they'll the bank may agree to it and they'll transfer the money into your bank account but if say you only really needed half of that money in the end you're still having to pay the interest on the full amount of money unless they've got a kind of an early repayment scheme whereas with an overdraft you're only ever going to be paying interest on the money that you actually 
physically have used. However, the interest is going to be higher than on a loan. You are also, I don't think I've written this down, um, but you are um, going to be limited by an overdraft. It's not going to be as much as a loan. And overdrafts can be uh, withdrawn at any time, so the bank can actually um, ask you to pay it back at any point, which could put a lot of people into financial problems. A mortgage is a little bit like a loan, but it's a long-term loan for purchasing a building. And usually the building itself is used as collateral. And collateral is um, a kind of a deposit um, for the bank, say. Um, the, it, it's, it's like insurance for the bank. Um, so if you uh, don't meet those repayments, they'll, they'll take that building. So very large amounts of money can be borrowed. And you can get mortgages that are fixed rates of interest as well. And that gives the business a little bit more certainty in how much they, that they're going to be paying each month. However, if you don't take if you don't meet the repayments they're going to take the property so you could lose the property and um, variable interest rates if it is a variable interest rate mortgage it can mean that the repayments are unpredictable so if this is a mortgage over 15 years so you know we it's really hard for us to predict what the interest rate is going to be in two years time let alone 15 years time and whatever the interest rate is for that bank at that particular time will determine the cost of those repayments every month trade credit now this is one that you might not have heard of but this is where suppliers allow the business to buy now so take ownership of the materials whatever they're buying from the supplier but pay for it later so it might be 30 days trade credit 60 days trade credit meaning you can take the items and you can pay much later I remember one of my first jobs in the summer I worked in an office and it was very near a PC world and one of the computer screens broke and they sent me to PC world to get a computer screen and um, I just went there, picked one out, and uh, they asked me for the account number. I gave them account number, and then I just walked out of the store with the screen. They didn't need me to pay anything, and I just I was so shocked by this. But that what was going on there was trade credit. The the business were going to get bills for it, but they would only have to pay in thirty days time. Uh, the benefit of this is it's free finance. You do have to pay eventually, but there's no interest um, on the um, money. Um, that you're getting or the, the monetary value of the items that you're getting so it's a, so in a, essence it is free finance and it can help with short-term cash flow problems so this is going to be a later presentation but if you know you've got cash flow problems you've got a lot of money going out you don't have very much coming in you can't really afford to buy the items at the moment but you know in the future you're going to be able to afford to it can certainly help with those short-term problems uh, by reducing the amount of money that's going out um, from your business however the supplier doesn't have to agree you could go to your supplier and say oh could I have 30 days to pay for this and they could say no you can't have 30 days you need to pay now so there's no reason why the supplier will agree unless you're a very loyal customer and um, sometimes the supplier might give you a discount for immediate payment as well so if you're asking for trade credit you're not going to get that discount so eventually it's it will increase your overall costs. Now this is probably the student's favourite source of finance and uh, grants are, is, is money given by the government or other charitable organisations, uh, should be an S on the end of S, sorry about that, to encourage firms to set up or uh, encourage them to provide a particular good or a service. And again, this is free finance, so there's no interest on this, but best of all, this money does not need to be paid back. This is money given from the the government or these charitable organizations without thinking that they're going to get this money back however it is very hard to qualify there's a number of requirements that you have to satisfy to be able to um, receive a government grant so it might be that you have to be producing a particular type of product it might be that you have to be located in a certain area so lots of businesses just simply won't qualify for these and there aren't so many around as well with the credit crunch and the recession and the kind of financial crisis over the last few years the government have really cut spending on these types of things and there's lots of forms to fill out that's not such a big <laughs> disadvantage but it can be if you're just setting up a business and they're quite complicated and you, you don't really know um, what you're doing um, it can mean as well that you're you're working on filling out a grant form for something um, that 
might not even bring you that much money in and you're not focusing on your business idea and getting your product to the market so it's a it's a good source of finance if you can get it but there aren't so many around and they're usually not for very large sums of money so where can you get support if you are thinking of setting up your own business so this is from the uh, prince's trust website um and they've got a whole section on support for setting up your own business um and you can see their statistics 1980 since 1983 they've helped over 80,000 young people to start their own business and they've got a lovely um part of their website i'd, I'd look and go and watch lucy's video and have a look at that information high street banks as well i've just um Googled NetWest, um, but all of the banks will have sections on there to support business banking as well, and they, they can give you tips and help with setting up your business plan to make it more likely you're going to get a loan, because really they want you to borrow from you, because that's how, sorry, they want uh, you to borrow from them, because that's how they make their money, they they want people to take out loans, um, so they're going to try and make it as straightforward as possible for the businesses but part of that will be providing support and help and and information as well on how the loans work and uh, the government website is actually really good gov.uk and they have a whole section on starting your own business but interestingly as well i found this section was starting well starting your own business and then here the setting up and choose the right legal structure for your business so um they have a whole section here on legal structure so this links into that other section of the course um from um the first part that you've learned about sole traders partnerships ltds and then they um um, we'll have um, a little bit of information on PLCs as well um, but that's something to, to have a look at if you're revising that part of the course so finally the last specification objective why is getting finance hard well it's a big thing for someone to lend you money um, they've got to trust you and they've got to think that you're going to pay them back and banks don't often know in detail the people that are coming to them to ask for loans so they can do lots of checks on you and your credit history and those types of things but there is this element of trust and if you're setting up a new business there's going to be very little evidence that you can actually make this money back so you might have all these grand plans but how does the bank actually know that you're going to be able to pay this money back so that might be difficult for them um to actually you know believe in you especially if you don't have a good business plan um that's very clear um and plans are going to be very important as i've just said but um making forecasts is going to be really difficult again if you're setting up your new business because you don't really know how think much things are going to cost and there are going to be unexpected costs as well and you don't really know i imagine that people that set up businesses do market research but you don't really know how many sales you're going to get or what the best products are going to um, be in terms of sales this is very much trial and error that you go through when you set up your business so that's going to be very very difficult for you to provide that evidence to provide those plans that are realistic and those forecasts to enable a bank to trust you to then lend you the money so that's really why small businesses find it very very difficult to get finance initially.